Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. I'm glad that you've joined me today, and I hope that you'll stay tuned and share out this briefing to others so that they can see what's taking place as we are bringing you each time we get together like this. Just an update, a few moments that deal with the issues of the day as it relates to Bible prophecy and how important that it is that we stay up to date in the time that we're living. Many places that are not even considering Bible prophecy at all. And uh, actually, are, many people are ignorant concerning what's taking place in our world. When you don't have that biblical worldview uh, in the light of the Word of God and Bible prophecy, some things may seem like it's just as another day uh, here in our world. But I can assure you it's nothing like just another normal day, as they would call it. As a matter of fact, this particular article I want to share with you today, once again, denotes how that God will deal with humanity and with this world as we get closer and even beyond the rapture of the church, but certainly in the end of time. The Bible is very clear concerning it. We're going to share some things with you today. But this article from the Jerusalem Post is one that's quite telling. And it asks the question, uh, as we're posing to you today, concerning God and how he relates with natural disasters, famines, droughts, earthquakes, and the like. Here's the title of the article, Heaven Sent, Is Lebanon's Earthquake a Testament to Divine Protection? This is an opinion piece in the Jerusalem Post, but it is uh, written concerning a true and actual event that took place just a few days ago, a 5.4 magnitude earthquake that struck the Syrian and Lebanon area, uh, impacting that particular area. And this article goes on to say this was not just a seismic event, but it may have served as an unanticipated yet divine act that thwarted a grave threat against the Jewish nation. Hezbollah, and I'll summarize this article for you, Hezbollah was planning an attack, of course, uh, as a proxy of Iran, and they were preparing that along with Hamas and Hezbollah on a multi-front situation. But as it uh, is found out that this earthquake that took place wound up uh, covering up and actually destroying tunnels where armaments and other uh, attacking equipment that they could have used against Israel was actually covered up. The tunnels collapsed, their assault weapons were buried, and it certainly was a day of devastation. Now, this would have been even more a devastation had they carried it out, this attack upon Israel during the time of uh, Teshuvah. The, the holy day or a day of mourning as it would be for the nation of Israel. This is important for us to understand because this unexpected turn of events that's taken place by way of an earthquake is not something that's unprecedented in the Bible and in Bible prophecy and the days that are to come. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us very clearly we're told to watch for earthquakes, famines, pestilence, uh, and signs in the heavens, according to Matthew 24, 7 and Luke 21, 11. This is very important because as a sign of the end time, God actually uses, and that's the question, does God use uh, earthquakes in these last days? And was it used in this occasion to protect Israel? Well, whether or not this actual event was um, God sent to protect Israel, I personally believe that it was to be able to stop this attack. Why? I don't know. That's in the mind of God. But I do know that God uses it to get the attention of people here on this earth through famines, drought, earthquakes, uh, and any number of different things to cause us to fall on our face, repent, and turn back to God. There's one thing that's for sure. Many people may be shrugging their shoulders today and saying, well, there isn't any natural calamities that uh, are occurring that are actually connected to God. But all you've got to do is look in the Word of God and you're going to find out uh, that it's very true that God uses events like this and even allows events like this to take place to get people's attention. Because too many people in this world, including Christians, are trying to rationalize everything and bring in the experts to talk about it, uh, we find ourselves doing what the Bible says in Psalm 1, becoming a scoffer. Uh, someone who is sitting in the seat of the ungodly, and uh, we're at a place where we question everything that God uh, is doing and try to explain it away. But I want you to know in Genesis 6, God dealt with the world's sin with a great flood in the days of Noah. 
In the book of Joel chapter one, he calls a nation, the nation of Judah, back to repentance through a horrible locust invasion that took place. In the book of Amos chapter number four, there is a drought and strong winds, mildew, locust, famine, and pestilence that occur in Amos chapter four to get the nation of Israel's attention and to cause them to repent. In Haggai chapter one, the prophet Haggai uh, points towards a drought as the evidence of God calling the people back to their priorities and getting them in order. As we've stated in Matthew 24, here's what the Bible says. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places, different locations around the globe. And he denotes this, he says this in chapter 24, verse 8, and these are the beginning of sorrows. Why is that so important? Because you need to understand that the things that are happening in our world and in 2023 has been an unprecedented time of natural disasters, especially earthquakes. And in recent days, the article and the information has come forward that uh, FEMA has now run out of money. Now they'll appropriate more and bring more in. There is no doubt that's the way things work. But the bottom line is with them saying that the one agency that is tasked with getting relief funds and helping in disaster situations has run out of finances to be able to do that. My friends, it's uh, as I share with this congregation, uh, it is a writing straight from the prophecy that came from David Wilkerson in the book, The Vision, in 1973, that FEMA would run out of money as it gets closer to the coming of the Lord because there would be so many disasters taking place that they could not be able to recover. There's three things I want to point out to you here quickly uh, concerning whether or not we are in a position, and this is the way you need to look at this, whether it's a natural disaster that occurs or whether or not it is God using it as some um, remediation judgment that is coming to get the people's attention. So here's three things for you to note right here. One, uh, what was the timing of the event? This earthquake, for instance, uh, as it relates to the sin of a people, a location, or a nation. Uh, that's one thing to look at. Then look at the magnitude of that event. Is it something that is uh, capturing people's attention, uh, certainly around the world, not only in that particular region, to cause them to focus upon God and upon uh, things that are happening that are of eternal significance? And then number three, what about a prophet declaring on the behalf of God that this is going to happen if uh, you don't repent. These are the things that are ingredients found in the word of God that help us to delineate between what may be a natural event of just the uh, storms and weather and all that's going on and those that maybe God is allowing to happen to get people's attention. Well, the Bible tells us uh, in 47 different places, at least 47 different places, I should say, that God is actually in control of all the weather. Uh, you can find that in Psalm 148, Revelation chapter number seven, and multiple other passages of scripture. But what I want to close out with you here today is to help you to understand that there are at least seven prophetical earthquakes that take place in the word of God that are designed to get people's attention to draw them back to the Lord and repent. And let me just run them very quickly for you. Number one was found in the book of Amos chapter number one. It was the earthquake in the days of Uzziah. And it's important for you to understand that this was a prophecy that came even two years prior to the earthquake taking place uh, that Amos prophesied to be able to cause people to return back to God. As a result, they did not, and the Bible tells us clearly that that earthquake came. Uh, many places you can find other references to it, especially in Zechariah 14, verse number five, that deals with this very uh, occurrence that took place. But I wanna drill in on these that I wanna give you last. Number two in this list of prophetical earthquakes is the Ezekiel 38 earthquake that's going to take place. It's important for you to realize Ezekiel 38 is the lead up to the time of the war of Gog and Magog that I believe could certainly happen at any moment. Then there is the Revelation 6 earthquake that takes place, the great earthquake there that's describing uh, what happens after the breaking of the sixth seal. That is one to come. So is the uh, Ezekiel earthquake. 
Then there is uh, the earthquake that will occur at the sounding of the seventh trumpet that takes place uh, in uh, Revelation chapter number 11. And the Bible says that it's going to come with lightnings, thunderings, and great hail. This is actually the introductory earthquake into the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. You can find it all here in the Word of God. Uh, and then finally, in Revelation 16, what is identified as probably the great or the greatest earthquake that will have ever been, and it is yet coming in Revelation 16 during the tribulation period where the Bible says this, and I want to just read this for you very quickly. In verse chapter 16, verse number uh, 17, then the seventh angel poured out his bowl upon the air and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne saying, it is done. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. There was a great earthquake such as there has not been since man came upon the earth. Did you hear that? So great an earthquake was it and so mighty. What happened? The great city, and he's referring to the time Uh, or to the city Babylon that will be in the future, was split into three parts, and the nations fell. Babylon the Great was remembered before God because of the depravity and all that took place. Great hailstones fall out of the sky, the Bible says, that are weighing 100 pounds each. They come down from heaven with a great plague, the Bible says, and it goes on to describe the horror of that moment when this greatest earthquake that has ever been occurs to destroy the city of Babylon. My friends, it's very important for you to realize that God in this very late hour before his coming is getting people's attention by what uh, is happening in our world, even through natural disasters and occurrences of earthquakes and famines and the like. And you can see it uh, continually uh, in the news. What is our response to God What is that supposed to be? Well, I want you to know God doesn't do things in an evil thought. He does that in a way to get people to turn their attention back to him. Sometimes those things are quite drastic, like these kinds of events. The Bible says that when the inhabitants of the world uh, will learn righteousness is when God's judgment will come upon the earth. Uh, Isaiah 26, verse number nine. So it's all about people being repentant in their heart and humbling themselves before the mighty hand of God. So in answer to the question of this article from Jerusalem Post, is this an act of God? Did God preserve Israel? I personally believe that there is no doubt that the shaking of the earth that collapsed the tunnels that had the arms to kill more uh, Israelis and Jewish people, God shook the earth. Only God can do that. I want to encourage you to keep looking towards heaven because I believe any day now that Jesus is going to return. Do everything you can to reap the harvest. And until that time, keep this thought in mind. Jesus Christ is coming soon.